Good evening, my name is uh, Dr. Thomas Infernuso, a board certified surgeon at the Animal Surgical Center. The topic for this evening is spinal injury in dogs. Uh, just to have a preliminary discussion in regards to what spinal injury is and what leads to these patients to come in, uh, most often they come in paralyzed, is related to trauma, uh, hit by car, or just traumatic injury related to a jump that leads to the component of the disc herniating and putting pressure on the spinal cord. Of course, the pressure on the spine or the impingement of the nerve will lead to pain, chronic pain, acute pain, and then, of course, the wiring system from the brain down to the legs will be interfering with the voluntary movement of the legs. When patients come into the Animal Surgical Center, the first step to diagnose spinal injury is to do a very thorough neurologic examination in conjunction with a general exam as well as an orthopedic exam because a combination of, of um, signs can be noted mostly when you have trauma, uh, fractures as well as herniations. The, after performing the uh, physical examination, we locate, we describe as a neuroanatomic location of the herniation. And we have a, a classification that we use from neck to mid-back to lower back. And then based on that, we have the ability to do dye tests or contrast tests with CT. So CAT scan in conjunction with myelogram, which is the ability to inject a contrast, which is a dye, that goes into the spinal column and outlines where the herniation is that allows us to identify the location or the locations of the, those discs they're herniating and putting pressure on the, on the spine. And accordingly to the location, we'll be uh, addressing the issue as well as determining whether or not surgery is indicated. Once we have a diagnosis, uh, spinal injury related to a disc herniation versus a spinal tumor versus a stroke, which is another possibility, um, we contact clients and then we take the patient to surgery if the surgery is indicated for the patient. So the surgery that we perform is similar to client to human, which is called laminectomy or hemilaminectomy. And what that implies is going over the um, spinal column, which is made of these boxes, which are the vertebrae, and you can actually see here. Here's the, the boxes, the vertebrae, the yellow cord is the spinal cord, and then between each box, you see the bluish, whitish collar, which is the actual disc. The disc is a shock absorber. So what we do, we go from the top, and we create a little window. And the window is, is related to the removal of the portion of the lamina, which is the portion of the vertebra. So by removing that section, we create a little window that allows us to remove that portion of the disc herniating and pressing on the spine. And that is called laminectomy with removal of the uh, herniated disc. Once that is done, we close them and then we monitor them very closely uh, for two to four days, ensuring that pain is under control as well as urination and defecation. So the prognosis and outcome for spinal injury uh, post-surgery is fairly good, depending on the neurologic status of the patient. Do they have sensation? And we define that as a deep pain. Uh, do they have voluntary movement? We call them motor function. If the patient comes in with negative, with positive deep pain, which is the ability to feel, as well as the ability to move voluntarily their limbs, that is a very good prognostic indicator. And the reason why we say that, we give 90 to 95% successful outcome in a way that these patients will be able to regain their function later on. Vice versa, if the sensation is not there or the voluntary movement is not present, the prognosis decreases. It usually we give a prognosis of a 50-50 shot that the patient's gonna be ambulating again. 
The recovery for spinal surgery is usually two to four months. Patients with spinal injury most often are down dogs, so down cats, unable to ambulate. So they require physical therapy, assistance during the urination. Uh, they need to be turned, they need to be helped. Often we use wheelchairs to assist them uh, during the recovery phase. And clearly the prognosis and the outcome of these patients is related to the neurologic exam prior to surgery. So if they have sensation and voluntary movement, the prognosis is excellent. We actually give 90 to 95% good outcomes. If the patient has lost deep pain, which is the ability to have sensation or voluntary movement, the percentage will decrease up to 50% for a successful outcome. Thank you so much for listening and I'm honored to have shared this information with you.